Pooja. Good morning, everyone. So uh, Friday again, uh, US market decline continued, and even the futures are uh, down. Even if we see dollar index, it is uh, consistently moving up, indicating that risk of scenario continue. Uh, uh, if you see Asian market, uh, most of the Asian markets are uh, down, anywhere between 1.5 uh, to 2%. Uh, Hong Kong market is close today. And uh, similar thing now also visible in commodity also. Uh, oil though continue to remain flat, but aluminum down 2.5%. Uh, iron ore down by 6% and steel down by around 3% in China. Uh, and copper is more of a flat. So more of a risk, risk of uh, scenario is still uh, continuing in other market as well. We see similar trend also visible in Indian market. Uh, inflation uh, is expected on 12th of May in India, and uh, that is expected at around 7.4% versus uh, last month uh, uh, inflation of 6.95. So uh, that uh, reaction to that high inflation expectation has already been seen in uh, RBI policy, victim policy, which was indicating that the inflation will be high in this quarter, uh, this month. And uh, we may get uh, further clue for how fast RBI can tighten uh, or increase interest rate in coming period. Uh, I'll request technical team to take up from here. Yes, thank you. So good morning, all of you. Uh, today, sir, market is likely to open with a gap down and we are likely to witness the limit pressure during the day. Friday, we have seen that the Nifty was uh, failed to maintain a positive closing above 16,470 level, which was the level we are looking for. If it manages to maintain the closing above that level, then we are both expecting a pullback rally. But somehow Nifty fails to maintain a closing above 16,470. Going ahead, the overall view will remain a cautious. Selling pressure is likely to be extended, which might take a Nifty towards 16,200 to 16,100 levels on the downside. For today intraday purpose, the immediate support is placed at 16,270. Below that level, 16,170 and 16,100 levels can be seen. Whereas on higher side, uh, for resistance is placed at 16,550 levels will be the first resistance level. About that level, 16,640 levels can be seen. The overall view will remain a cautious as long as Nifty trades below. 16,700 levels on the higher side. So uh, that is the major important resistance levels for the Nifty. If it's clear that resistance levels and maintain a positive closing for at least one to two trading sessions, then only we can witness some pullback rally into the market. Coming towards the bank Nifty, uh, for the two-day intraday purpose, the support is placed at 34,170 levels. Below that level, 33,940 levels can be seen. Whereas on high side, 35,070 and 35,300 levels can be seen on the Bank Nifty end also. Uh, Bank Nifty as uh, on the technical front is continuously trading uh, below the important moving averages. Also the fact that it's just trading in the lower channel. So the overall view will also remain cautious to bearish on the Bank Nifty as well. As long as it sustains trades below 35,000 psychological mark, the pullback rally cannot be expected, expected into the Bank Nifty as well. Coming towards the Nifty Finance, for today intraday purpose, 15,570 is the first support level. Below that level, 15,480 levels can be seen. On the flip side, 15,870 is the first resistance level. If it's managed to surpass that level, then only 15,940, 16,000 levels can be seen on the higher side. So these are the important support and resistance uh, level for all the three indices. Let, uh, as of now, we are not uh, initiating any buy or the sell call. Let the market settle down at the support levels. Uh, for in the first half and our trading session, we will witness the, the trend of the market and accordingly, we will initiate a buy or the sell call. I think that's it from my end. I request derivative guys to take a call for you. Yeah, thank you, Swati. See, on the derivative front, um, things uh, uh, were expected uh, where nifty would bounce back from 16500 but that has not really happened um, however 16500 put still has a considerable amount of put built up um, having said that uh, highest put base has shifted to uh, 16000 strike uh, puts and uh, that is not a very good sign uh, 
looking at the open interest, uh, the open interest has risen 30% in the last two days uh, for uh, the index. And uh, that is also uh, not a very good sign. Aggressive shorts have been built in. The only silver lining is uh, the PCR has uh, gone towards the 0 0.70 levels and uh, it is sitting in the oversold zone. Uh, so, uh, you know, there can be a good uh, and a considerable amount of uh, bounce back whenever that comes. But uh, uh, the tendency for PCR is that the Nifty can remain in oversold zone for a couple of days or more. Uh, so that only one indicator uh, indicating some bounce. We need other indicators like the VIX and the open interest uh, uh, to become positive, which they are not. So clearly there can be some more selling coming in, in Nifty up till 16,000 levels. Uh, some 16,000 levels can be retested going forward. Um, now, looking at the stock specific front, most of the stocks witnessed some uh, selling on Friday and uh, on in the last week. But uh, definitely, uh, you know, there are some stocks which witnessed some bounce back. Um, so out of them, uh, only ABB at this point of time uh, has seen some uh, good longs uh, formation. Also, Gujarat Gas has seen some good uh, long formation. So these two stocks can pit, uh, pretty much uh, remain uh, uh, in the buying zone. But uh, most stocks can witness selling pressure. Um, IT sector has become quite negative, and that can uh, be one sector which can uh, be uh, you know uh, underselling uh, going forward. So T. CS, uh, uh, Tech Mahindra, HCL Tech, and Infosys, these stocks can uh, pretty much witness more uh, selling pressure. So look out for the same. Even metals, uh, for that matter, can uh, uh, witness some selling. Some breakdowns have come in for Hindalco, Tata Steel, and uh, uh, JSW Steel. So these stocks can pro probably witness more selling as well. So uh, look out for the same. That's it from my side. I'd like to ask the fundamental team to take over this. Good morning. Uh, uh, Equitas Holdings, uh, uh, there was news uh, on this uh, company that uh, RBI has conveyed uh, no objection for proposal of reverse merging uh, Equitas Holdings into Equitas Small Finance Bank uh, subject to some conditions. Uh, yet the procedure is still uh, long and it may take uh, more than a year as there are several permissions to be taken uh, from uh, again from RBI and uh, SEBI, NCLT and others as well. So we are uh, positive on uh, financial services and IDFC limited. Uh, uh, Indostar Capital Finance uh, uh, has been under uh, uh, some kind of a uh, you know, purview of uh, uh, the board of that company and they had uh, uh, appointed the ENY as independent auditors to review the books and uh, uh, what ENY has come out with is that uh, they have said the uh, approval process uh, for loans to existing customers was not being followed properly. And also for uh, restructured loans, the company did not follow steps as detailed by RBI guidelines. And uh, because of this, the company will have to make additional uh, ECL provisions of around 560 to 680 crores, uh, which, which amounts to around 6 to 7% of total AUM. So that kind of uh, you know provisioning hit uh, should be coming uh, in the next one or two quarter. Uh, and uh, this amounts to almost uh, 19 to 20 percent of the total net worth of the company. So expect that kind of a decline in the stock as well. So this is negative for Indostar Capital. Canara Bank result uh, was below expectation. Uh, uh, after last quarter's uh, good result, uh, this quarter has disappointed. Asset quality performance has turned weak. Credit cost increased from 1.3 to 2.1 percent. Slippage also increased from 1.9 to 2.7 percent. Uh, so this is negative. Uh, then uh, there were three mid-cap private uh, banks uh, results which came out, and uh, we are bullish on all of them from a long-term perspective. Uh, first one is CSB Bank, where uh, result has improved. Uh, gross NPS came down to 1.8 percent from 2.6 percent. Uh, this was mainly because, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, most of the GNPA were from the gold loan book where uh, recovery and upgrades have been very strong. Uh, now the challenge for the bank is to grow uh, both uh, uh, gold as well as non-gold loans. And uh, uh, if the, what they have guided is that uh, they will be growing faster than system uh, growth. Uh, however, uh, we think that that will not be enough for uh, you know, a major re-rating to warrant if they want 
uh, a major re-rating to happen, then the loan book has to grow at uh, more than 20%, more like 25% CAGR. Uh, otherwise, we think that uh, ROA will remain at 1.3% and ROE of 13% uh, for this year as well as next year. And uh, so uh, as per current uh, price to book of uh, 1.2 times, we feel there is uh, some upside left and a fair price to book multiple is at around one and a half times. If at all the stock um, corrects uh, sharply, then uh, one can buy the stock. We are positive from long term perspective. Uh, Federal Bank result was in line. Operating result was disappointing with loan growth of just 9%. And uh, OPEX, however, OPEX growth was high at 19%, which led to uh, profit before provisioning uh, declining by 10%. Uh, credit cost, uh, however, was very low at just 0.2%. Uh, and slippage is also continue to decline at uh, just 1.1%. Uh, um, so overall asset quality uh, has been uh, very good for this bank uh, problem with this uh, what with federal bank has been uh, about growth and uh, uh, you know uh, managing the cost uh, so uh, bank has guided that this year they will be growing a loan book by 15% uh, and they will reach it uh, an roa of 1.1% uh, and uh, next year ROA of 1.2%. If uh, they were to deliver on this guidance, then we feel there is a good re-rating potential uh, from current one-time price to book to almost 1.5 times. Uh, but uh, but that is still some time away. And uh, in the past also, bank has been guiding of delivering this kind of ROA, but some of the other issue comes up either in the bank or on the macro front. So we'll have to wait and see uh, over here. DCB bank result was above expectation. Uh, loan growth accelerated to 13%, which is a 12 quarter high. Uh, credit cost came down to 0.9%, uh, which is the lowest in last 10 quarters. Uh, slippage uh, optically looks high at 5%. Uh, however, bulk of them are from gold loans uh, where they get uh, upgraded after a couple of months or uh, you know, are recovered. And hence, uh, upgrades and recoveries were uh, higher than uh, slippages uh, this quarter as well. Uh, expect credit cost to normalize to uh, you know, 0.6 to 0.7% levels uh, in second half of this year. And once that happens, we expect company to deliver ROE of 1% and ROE of around 11%. And so we can expect stock to re-rate uh, from current uh, depressed valuation of just 0.6 times book value to uh, around one time book value, which uh, offers decent upside. Uh, so we are positive on DCB. Uh, that's it from my side. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Naveen Flooring International came out with the results. Though the top line uh, looked good, uh, however, due uh, on Q and Q, the RM inflation impacted the profitability, and that is why uh, the overall performance was uh, below expectations. We expect a negative reaction in today's trade on Naveen. Bajaj Consumer Care announced the results, and here also the same thing, uh, the same story continues. The results were below expectation because of the margins which came at 17% versus expectation of 207 uh, Poshak uh, Limited, uh, that's a chemical company which announced their results. Its results have improved uh, as the sales has grown by 36% by one, even the EBITDA margins have improved. The company is into one of the key raw material where uh, the lice, uh, the the companies need the licensing and uh, it's only one of the uh, one of the company in india who manufactures it so we on long term basis we are positive on this green panel industries announced their results and results were above expectations during the quarter sales grew by 21% and even the margins have improved uh, by around 500 bibs on yy basis at 29% uh, we are ex we are seeing that the uh, company is posting good results from last two three quarters so we believe that the outperformance would continue in today's trail also thank you uh, sorry, just one more update. Uh, Lupin has got uh, US FDA approval for two uh, products. Though the products both are individually not very big, one has a market size of around $160 million, another is around $260 million. This is marginal positive for Lupin. Uh, we don't expect much uh, gain on this news. Thank you.
Good morning, everyone. There was a news on Friday wherein LTI has merged with Mindtree. The combined entity will be known as LTI Mindtree and would become the fifth largest IT service company by market cap. Debashish Chatterjee, the current CEO of Mindtree, will be heading the entire entity and the acquisition is expected to be completed in next 9 to 12 months. Uh, all the shareholders of Mindtree or holding 100 shares of Mindtree would be getting 73 shares of LTI. After the uh, combined entity, LNT will hold around 69% of the holding. This merger will help the company to become more service-oriented since service focus of both the companies are uh, different and with this the company would uh, this com this merger will also help the company to cross sell and up, uh, upsell uh, the services and uh, and have and bid for larger technology deals. Uh, both the entity had indicated for an industry leading growth in FY23. Outlook is long term positive for the company. Uh, HCL Tech has acquired digital banking and wealth management specialist Con Conti uh, Revenue for CY21 uh, stood at 17.5 million uh, Swiss francs. Uh, this is a very small acquisition. Outlook is neutral on the company. Uh, CRM Silk Mills has posted improved set of numbers both on the revenue and the margin front. Share is stock is trading at 13.5 times TTM EPS. Go Fashion uh, Go Colors has posted improved set of numbers for the quarter. Revenue grew by 29.4% uh, year on year. Uh, volume growth came in at 11% year on year. EBITDA margins has also improved to 32.4% versus year on year of 27.5%. Uh, stock is trading at 149 times TKM APS. The call for the same will be held today, when the further details will be shared. Thank you. Yeah, good morning. Uh, Apollo Trico Tubes uh, reported its result. Uh, result was okay. Uh, sales volume came at uh, 60, uh, 65,000 ton versus uh, 54,000 ton quarter on quarter. Uh, EBITDA per ton uh, came at uh, 7149 versus uh, Q1Q of 8000 rupees. Uh, margin were marginally down by uh, uh, quarter on quarter. Uh, it was 5.6 versus uh, 6%. Uh, stock is trading at EV by EBITDA of uh, 26 times uh, on trailing basis. Uh, Mangalam cement uh, result has improved. Uh, revenue came at uh, rupees 452 crores versus uh, 380 crores quarter on quarter. Epita came at uh, 55 crores versus uh, 46 crores quarter on quarter. Uh, the stock stock is trading at EV by bit of 5.6 times FI23 earnings. Thank you. Yeah, apart from this. Uh... Mima, you have anything or should I go? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, okay, fine. Uh, Reliance Industry came up with a number and uh, results were in line with expectations. Uh, if you take talk about Geo, the ARPU came uh, ahead of expectations at around 167.6 uh, as against expectation of 164. Uh, but there is a, a, a subscriber decline uh, to 410 million as compared to quarter on quarter 421 million. This is mainly because of some adjustment which uh, company has uh, made to uh, subscriber base wherein uh, uh, some subscriber has been deleted from uh, their total count. Uh, and that has also helped it to report higher ARPU as well. Uh, so, uh, more of a, uh, if we see the EBITDA, EBITDA is in line with what expectation was and came it at 10,900 versus Q1 to 10,000. Uh, retail, Reliance Retail uh, has seen some decline of 3.6% uh, year on year in sales, mainly on account of some lockdown in the chain month. And uh, uh, that has uh, uh, impacted uh, this. Uh, and the overall margin also came out both uh, quarter on quarter and year on year. The EBITDA margin came in at 6.9% versus year on year 8.8% and quarter on quarter 7%. Uh, the outperformance came from uh, uh, <coughs> O2C business wherein EBITDA, uh, EBITDA grew by around 24% year on year and 6% quarter on quarter. 
and a beta per ton also increased to 8200 versus 8700 quarter on quarter so going forward from here uh, grm continue to remain very strong at around 28 singapore grm at around 28 which is uh, highest uh, in this impasse but that is mainly because of the disruption what is what is happening uh, and as the disruption pull off uh, this grm will come off uh, sharply so one need to remain careful in that geo what we are seeing that uh, the benefit of increase in prices has come in this quarter now going forward from here grm uh, uh, the arpu will is likely to remain stable and uh, there will be some minor growth in subscribers so going forward geo result will be stable retail may see some uh, cool off uh, as compared to march quarter in the june quarter as uh, a heat wave is on and uh, june somehow uh, show some declining trend so uh, here uh, the sales are retail also business is likely to show some softness and in o2c business grm is strong and uh, as such uh, uh, the refining uh, business is likely to show strong results whereas uh, pet chem results uh, as uh, as in q1 uh, q4 likely to show some decline so overall going forward from here more of outlook is uh, neutral nothing so great expected from uh, reliance uh, at, at an aggregate level then tata power reported uh, result ahead of expectations uh, revenue grew by around uh, 10% quarter on quarter and 18% quarter year on year and ebitda also improved both quarter on quarter and year on year by around 100 pips That campus uh, is uh, listing today. Uh, this is a shoe company. Uh, uh, no doubt, uh, Outlook. Uh, we had recommended uh, uh, positive from the long term perspective, uh, but from uh, the day of IPO and today, uh, even if we see the other footwear company are down by around uh, anywhere between six to ten percent. So, uh, similar type of uh, impact uh, can be there on these uh, uh, this. Uh, company as well so uh, from a short term perspective more of a neutral uh, what we see that uh, after two days uh, relaxo industry uh, result is uh, uh, likely to come which is more of a comparable company here the result uh, is likely to some show some declining trend mainly because of because of increase in the cost uh, at such uh, one, uh, uh, the campus uh, q1 result uh, q4 result can also see some softness so uh, not uh, recommending uh, sales to be purchased on uh, the listing uh, even if it is uh, at uh, issue price then results for uh, uh, 11th Adani Port is likely to report results and results are likely to show improving trend with uh, revenue growth of around 16% and EBITDA growth of around 21% year on year. Uh, Balaji Amines is likely to report numbers. Numbers are likely to be okay, uh, wherein uh, revenue is likely to grow by around 4.6% uh, uh, quarter on quarter, but EBITDA is likely to remain stable as margins are expected to come off a bit. To around 27% versus last quarter 28%. Bidla Corp is likely to report number and numbers are likely to show a bit uh, declining uh, trend as compared to other uh, listed peer, wherein we had seen over 100 rupees improvement in the EBITDA per ton quarter on quarter, but here expectation is of around 50 rupees uh, improvement. So will be softer than the other listed peer which has reported the result. Then Orient Cement is also likely to report number. Here again, the improvement in EBITDA per ton quarter on quarter will be around uh, 60 rupees, whereas uh, volume is likely to decline by around 10% year on year. So that is uh, result is uh, here again is likely to be softer than what what uh, what was uh, what the result of the other company has come. Uh, Petronet LNG has reported uh, uh, is expected to report result uh, which is likely to be declining 
mainly on account of margins. The margins are expected to decline sharply from 13.8% last quarter to 10% uh, this quarter, and uh, revenue is likely to remain more of a flat this quarter on quarter. So it will be a decline in results. Uh, Pricing cement is also likely to show some uh, uh, more of a stable type of number with uh, margin improvement from 7.1 to 8.8 meters percent. Relaxo footwear, I'd already said, result is likely to show declining trend, where his margin is likely to come off a bit. Then Sagar Cement is likely to report number. Here, the EBITDA per ton increase quarter on quarter is expected at around 70 rupees and the volume growth of around uh, uh, 6% uh, year on year. So, more of an improved set of number which we will be seeing in Sagar Cement. So, that's all from us. Uh, thank you very much and have a good day. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for in-depth interviews of India Inc. and press the bell icon so that you do not miss our updates.